An average person's heart rate is about 60 to 100 beats per minute. However, it doesn't mean that your heart is beating once every second like a clock. There is variation between the heartbeats, what's called heart rate variability or HRV. Hey, welcome back, my name is Seem and in this video we're gonna take a look at what is HRV and how you can use it to assess your fitness, sleep quality, recovery, stress and your nervous system status. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. It's showtime. HRV is the physical phenomenon of variation in the time interval between heartbeats. If the interval between your heartbeats is very monotonous and repetitive, like dot, 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 so there's little, there's little variation, that's low HRV. But if there is greater variety between the heartbeats, such as dot, 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 that, 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 so there's like more variety between there, then uh, that's a sign of higher HRV. Generally, a higher HRV indicates being more recovered, less stressed out, and higher parasympathetic activity, which is relaxed and recovered. If your heartbeat is very monotonous and your HRV is low, then that's a sign of more sympathetic activity and being stressed out. So basically, lower HRV just reflects either under recovery poor cardiovascular health, being stressed out, or having some sort of a cold or an infection. A sudden drop in your HRV has been shown to be a predictor of mortality after myocardial infarction and sudden cardiac death. Lower HRV is also associated with heart failure, diabetic neuropathy, and liver cirrhosis. There are several methods used to track your HRV depending on what technology you're using. Electrocardiogram ECG detects the R wave in the QRS complex and calculates the time between R waves. That's called R to R interval. Most of these modern devices like the Oura Ring, the Whoop Band, or the 8 Sleep Mattress use PPG to analyze your heartbeats. PPG measures interbeat intervals or IBIs. So generally as a healthier person, you would expect your heart rate variability to be higher. I have used these different home devices to measure my HRV. Based on my Oura Ring data, my average HRV is around 110 to 180. My average HRV on the 8 sleep mattress ranges from 100 to 130. My resting heart rate during sleep is also very low, around 38 to 40. Now, those numbers are very excellent in a lot of ways. I have one of the highest HRVs I've ever seen, and my resting heart rate is also very low, which is actually a good thing. It means that my heart has to work less a very fast heart rate even the average person's heart rate like 60 beats per minute in my opinion is uh, you know still very high if you're physically active and you're fit and you're athletic then you would expect your basal resting heart rate to also be around the 40s but when it comes to your hrv then you shouldn't really compare your numbers to others i know a lot of people who are very fit and healthy they are lean they're exercising regularly but their hrv is still around 30 or 40 or 50 or something like that but it really doesn't matter what you're like objective HRV compared to others. What really matters is your subjective HRV. What is your average HRV when you are in a good situation and when you are recovered versus what your average HRV when you're under recovered or you're stressed out. So you need to just establish a baseline. You need to measure your HRV with these different devices. Know what is your baseline level. Okay, my average HRV, for example, is going to be 60 or 70, for example. And if you see that it drops, you see that it goes to 30, then that, that's either a sign that you're under recovered or you're getting some sort of a cold or an infection. And the HRV prediction is actually very good. Like if you are starting to feel something in your throat, or if you are starting to feel like you're having a fever, then you can immediately see that your HRV actually preemptively drops. Your HRV drops lower already before you get the actual symptoms. So if you track your HRV, then you can use it very easily to structure your workouts to also know whether or not you are getting some sort of sickness and based on that, make some preemptive actions. Winning. But how do you actually increase your HRV. Let's start with the things that reduce your HRV. What are the things that drop your HRV and keep it at a lower baseline? Number one, worrying. Daily worry is related to low heart rate variability during waking and the subsequent sleep period. If you are the worrier type, then I recommend getting more into stoicism and meditation. Number two is emotional strain. Time pressure, social anxiety, negative emotions, trauma and stressful interactions decrease HRV and make you more sympathetic. Post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD victims experience more autonomic hyperactivity during rest and they cope with stress much worse. 
Blood sugar problems and insulin resistance. B fluctuations in blood glucose can cause stress on the pancreas and the brain, which produces cardiac vagal withdrawal, thus lowering HRV. Diabetics have lower HRV and signs of early cardiac neuropathy. Inflammation, higher pro-inflammatory cytokines decrease HRV. Heart rate variability also predicts levels of inflammatory markers like CRP, IL-6 and glycated hemoglobin. Next up, we have alcohol. Alcohol also lowers HRV and decreases recovery. And lastly, we have sleep deprivation. Poor sleep has been shown to decrease HRV during working hours. And here are the things that increase your HRV. Exercise, physical training decreases the risk of cardiovascular mortality and disease. Individuals who exercise regularly have a lower resting heart rate and higher HRV. So the key thing with exercise is that you do need to exercise, but you also need to recover. If you're chronically overtraining or if you're training every day very intensely, then you never allow your body to supercompensate and to become better. That's why the recovery periods are are equally as important as the exercise itself. Fasting, being in a fasted state, tends to lower your heart rate and increase HRV because the body tries to conserve more energy. However, if you go hypoglycemic or become stressed out, then it's gonna lower HRV because of the increased stress. And fasting for too long can actually lower HRV. A 48 hour fast has been shown to cause parasympathetic withdrawal, thus lowering HRV. Saunas increase HRV and reduce risk of all cause mortality. It's one of the most beneficial things for your resting heart rate, blood pressure, and cardiorespiratory fitness. Ice baths, cold showers, and winter swimming improve parasympathetic tone and lower inflammation. These things have a beneficial effect on your HRV. Music therapy. One study found that playing Native American flutes increased HRV and reduced stress. Humming and singing have also been found to benefit HRV because it requires guided breath control. Generally, music has a positive effect on your HRV by relaxing you and reducing stress. So you need to make sure that you listen to music that you enjoy and that you can relax to. I might be an anomaly, but I like to listen to like death metal and very like death core music which is very heavy and obviously has a lot of screaming and stuff like that but uh, I don't know for me it's very relaxing I actually take naps while listening to this death metal and death core music so yeah I might be an anomaly and my HRV is still very high Meditation can be a great way to lower stress and promote parasympathetic activity. Different meditation practices have been shown to improve HRV, reduce heart rate and blood pressure. And lastly, we have sleep and circadian rhythm optimization. Parasympathetic activity and HRV are supposed to be higher during nighttime, especially in REM sleep. Of course, HRV isn't like the number one biometric that you need to track to make sure that you are healthy. But generally, a higher HRV is a sign of better heart health, better physical fitness, and better recovery. It just shows you that your body is less stressed out and in a more parasympathetic state. What you need to pay attention to is the deviations from your norm. If you're going lower than your normal is, then that's a sign that you're either yeah, overtraining or stressed out. But if it's increasing, then that's a sign you're heading in the right direction. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click the like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.